We needed a next generation solution to really help us to align on single processes across multiple functional areas. We see that there's opportunities out there to do things better or there are companies that are doing things we want to do. At Ledestri, our supply chain is actually uh, very complex. Our ingredients, a lot of them have a short shelf life, I mean a matter of days sometimes. It's got to be an exact, just-in-time process to get the materials in here when we need them, to keep the production floor running and really to produce the materials we need with as little waste as possible. Our aim is always to simplify the process without compromising the business objectives. One of the challenges is the product configuration. You are looking at equipment with 400 over different components that goes into it, six sub-assembly levels. We are talking about a structure that you need to manage the changes for this kind of configuration. Our problems were really being able to promise accurate dates to our customers. Because we have so many items, it's, it's a little difficult to keep all of them in stock all the time, and we need to know when we can promise for those. Our vision is to reduce the world's carbon footprint using um, sustainable materials. Well, the challenges that we had was in the huge growth of the company, very dynamic growth. Our biggest challenges uh, were costs, visibility, and consistency. Our problem with logistics and transportation is the availability of the capacity of the trucks. So you have the way to maximize. That is the key. We have to be able to be nimble in the quick and agile environment that we operate in, potentially requiring us to double, triple our operations within one calendar year. Hello everyone, I'm Rick Jewell and welcome to Oracle Live. And this is the Supply Chain Management keynote session. In this session, I'd like to give you a little bit of a perspective of where we think supply chain is today. Um, give you a little bit of a state of the union for the supply chain cloud set of applications. I'll sprinkle in a video demo of latest innovation that we've provided in the products as well as give you a chance to see an interview with Craig Halterman, who is CIO of Kohu, one of our great customers. So let's go ahead and get started. At the risk of stating the obvious, the last six months have been a trying and challenging time for, for everyone in the world. Um, but especially for product companies and companies with supply chain and, and manufacturing plants. It's literally been a sea change for them and, and they are really at a crossroads at this point in time. But one of the key requirements, one of the keys to resiliency uh, really is the ability for organizations to be agile and responsive because flexible solutions and flexible processes as well as real-time insights are essential going forward. So the conversations have changed, not only in the general public but also in boardrooms. I would say now that probably 99% of the world's population now knows the words supply chain and has a newfound respect for the importance of supply chains and the people and systems that support them. But the fact is, is that supply chains have been un under pressure for a long, long period of time. Global supply chains, as we know them, have had dependence on predictability and sustainability and stability, which quite honestly is no longer there. And that is not just due to the pandemic that has occurred, but it's also to a, a mix of geopolitical forces as well as a number of market forces in addition to the actual pandemic. So the reality is, is that the new normals going forward and what are the key priorities for supply chain leaders are really all about resilience, automation, and flexibility we see that there needs to be a de-emphasis on efficiency and low cost as the primary definition of value, and rather it needs to be a multi-dimensional uh, value framework that puts equal weight on supply alternatives, risk exposure, tariff and tax consequences, certainly, as well as channel complexity. So we're at a time where your supply chains need to evolve, and it's not just cosmetic surgery. It needs to be radical change. I've talked about some of the globalization realignments that have occurred, where the stability and predictability has really been replaced with fragility now. 
the trade barriers and tariffs that have been put in place by a number of countries now come into play. But in addition to that, transportation costs have always getting, been getting lower and lower and lower. And that is no longer the case. They now have pretty much flatlined. Equally so, I mentioned that there are market trends and market changes that have been going on. And you know, first, there's a general move towards what we call servitization and taking products that you used to sell to customers and turning them into products and services that you can offer to those customers. Not only did it give you higher margins, but it also gives you a closer proximity, uh, closer partnership and relationship with your customers. So the reality is, is that speed and agility have now become the new low cost. And what companies are looking at and what I believe they need to be looking at is building at the point of consumption, providing better overall demand forecasting, and a much faster pace of innovation. Sustainability now is, is an accepted fact. And we, before this, before the pandemic, before these changes, we were, there were a number of disruptive competitors who entered into these markets and made significant inroads and changes to those markets, well, this is another opportunity for those disruptive competitors to come in and impact your business. And then there is the disruptive technology itself, which really is both a cause as well as a potential solution to these situations. So things like IoT, um, overall uh, analytics capability, machine learning, the like, um, are now part and parcel of systems and the world today. And really, the, the point is, is that how and how quickly you can uptake some of this new technology into your systems is going to dictate how competitive you are going forward. So we really see a huge shift for companies who have supply chains. That being shifting from what is currently the model of make in the East and sell in the West to make where you sell and supply where you make. So we see more manufacturing plants into local regions being built. And the, the fact is, is that we here at Oracle truly believe that the only way that you're going to compete and thrive going forward is by having a constantly evolving supply chain solution that really can only be delivered via the cloud. And the reason for that <coughs> is that the biggest obstacle for, to moving forward is the technical debt associated with on-premise systems. Fully 75 to 80% of the costs involved in on-premise systems is maintenance. Maintaining complex integrations, maintaining software, maintaining hardware, maintaining infrastructure, and doing forklift type upgrades every three to five years, basically for the purpose of keeping the lights on. And that's why the move to the cloud is so essential that not only does it free up capital, but more importantly, it allows the IT staff and members of the, the IT organization to become business enablers and business partners to help drive consequential change into the system and no longer be dealing with the technical debt. So moving to the cloud not only frees up the capital that's currently being used to pay back on that technical debt, but it also allows IT to get out of the maintenance business, to really focus on working with their business partners and become an enabler in conjunction with the business itself to move the business forward and to transform the business. Now, the fact is, is that when these sorts of disruptions occur, you need to deal with the tool set that you have in hand. Um, but the problem is, is that, you know, many people have the on-premise applications right now. And the statistics have proven that companies that have made the leap and made the transition to the cloud um, have much more flexibility and, and agility in order to address the changes that are going to be forthcoming. So that's exactly why we built the Oracle Supply Chain Cloud, true SaaS from the ground up, on, from a blank piece of paper. And it is now a proven solution for the new normal. And it's really for four primary reasons. First, 
It has built-in flexibility to outpace the business and business model changes that will be continuing happening. Um, so shifts in markets, shifts in products, shift in business models are all configurations in the cloud rather than reprogramming or redoing an integration like in an on-prem sort of a situation. Secondly, having one unified integrated data model helps break down the silos and enable end-to-end -end digital business processes that can automatically flow between all the different parts of your business and all the different teams, and visibility and automation just naturally improves as a result. Thirdly, by bringing the latest technology, as I spoke of before, to bear in quarterly updates and regular innovation that we can provide, Things like IoT, machine learning, AI, bots, um, digital advisors, things like that, all add to the speed and agility for organizations today. And then lastly, we, we built it from the ground up and then thus were able to embed 21st century business practices into our cloud products from the very beginning. So things like Industry 4.0, servitization, IoT, machine learning, and the like. But because we can continue to provide quarterly innovation to you, our customers, it, you're really future-proofed against the changes that are going to be happening in the future. Just to speak of some of those that continuous innovation. Um, Things that we've delivered in the last three quarters and are planning for the next three. In 20C, our latest release, we've added more than 200 new features just in the supply chain and manufacturing suite of applications. But what we've done in the last three releases, our new Oracle Business Network allowing you on a free basis to leverage this supplier network to, to quickly onboard your suppliers and, and immediately create transaction links between you and them. Project-driven supply chain, the ability to stripe every major entity by project and task and respect that from the execution components and with planning to do project-based planning in your supply plans. And speaking of growth, our planning products have, have advanced significantly in the last three quarters. We now have constraint-based planning. Planning considers process things like co- and byproducts. Replenishment, dealing with the demand information to properly replenish items. Backlog management, so how to prioritize short availability type products, which unfortunately in this day and age is very important. Equally so, country of origin with the tax and tariff requirements that are now in place. It's essential to know where are your products, where are your components coming from and brand new service logistics and depot repair functionality for supporting your aftermarket service to your customers. And then an AI planning advisor and, and IoT enabled logistics, which I'll come back to in a minute relative to doing demoing a couple of those products for you. Things that we've got planned going forward. Uh, more process manufacturing expansion, support for dual units of measure throughout the products, a brand new channel revenue management, so ship and debit functionality for distributors and CG customers and their relationships with retailers. Three products that are based off of our new Redwood UI, production scheduling for detailed scheduling on the shop floor, a mobile self-service procurement capability, which is obviously in the day of most of us working from home becomes very important as far as ordering products and, and things that we need to do our work. And then a recall management capability specifically focused on healthcare customers to deal with the, the constant recall problem that is in place in most of those healthcare institutions. Continuing to evolve into higher volume order processing, more IoT work, as well as analytics and machine learning based spend classification for our procurement capabilities. Now, as I mentioned, let's touch on one of those areas that we have uh, provided in the recent past, and that being what we call IoT-enabled logistics. And, and by bringing together our warehouse management capabilities, our transportation management capabilities, and our IoT fleet monitoring functionality, we're able to provide a true end-to-end -end digital process. 
such that we can geofence the trucks. We can also geofence the warehouses themselves so that we know in a real time basis where they are. First, that information can be fed back into the transportation management lead time information. So every time a truck goes down a given route, down a given road, we can update and refine the lead times that we maintain in the system. But then as those trucks approach a given warehouse, be able to geofence that information to know its proximity, to automate the check-in, check-out process, and then also automatically execute processes inside of the warehouse itself to make the goods available for efficiency for both the driver as well as the warehouse workers, all while maintaining the proper level of fuel consumption and sustainability type of information. And so that's just one of the ways that we've brought our IoT capabilities and our machine learning and adaptive intelligence to bear in our suite of products. But as I say, that's just one. We've also done this in planning, product lifecycle management, maintenance, manufacturing, logistics, all these areas. And the reason why we can do this is because quite honestly, we are the only company on the planet that has IoT applications not just an IoT platform where we say, go build your own. We have out of the box, fit for purpose, pre-integrated IoT and machine learning applications that we can bring to bear. So fleet monitoring, production monitoring, asset monitoring, and connected worker for wearables are all consummate part of our solutions that, that constantly bring innovation and machine learning capabilities to our suite of applications. Now, one of the points that we'd like to make and somewhat validation for you know, where we think we are in this market, I trust everyone is well aware of, the, uh, of Gartner, a very prestigious uh, analyst firm, and they have very recently come out with a brand new magic quadrant. Uh, and that specifically is cloud ERP for product-centric enterprises. So the reality is this magic quadrant is all about supply chain and manufacturing. So large enterprise who sell products. And we are thrilled, as you can see, to be the only company in the leaders quadrant by a relatively wide margin. Now, it's not only that, but what we consider to be our biggest competitor in this space that being SAP, is not even in the magic quadrant at all because Gartner viewed that they do not have a SaaS solution to sell. They are still selling 20 plus year old on-premise systems in a hosted environment, either on Microsoft or on Amazon. But because they do not have a true SaaS product, they were not part of this analysis done by Gartner. We're not only thrilled to be the only one in the leaders quadrant for this particular magic quadrant, but we are also in the magic quadrant from a number of other supply chain based functional areas like transportation management, warehousing, MES systems, financials, customer service and customer engagement, as well as field service and many more. So again, to get back to one of those new capabilities that we have just added in 20C, of our applications, and that being the IA-based planning advisor. So bringing machine learning directly to the planners, to your demand planners and your supply planners. First couple of use cases being around, first being around new product introduction. So looking at the detailed attributes associated with the products that were previously launched, the ones that were successful, the ones that were not successful, doing detailed demand analysis associated with those and bringing that analysis to bear as predictions for how this particular product launch will perform. And then also based on our IoT um, apps capabilities, be able to give direct feedback to the planner before they launch the next supply plan. So knowing if a particular production facility has issues, a machine is down, a line is not performing up to where it should be, um, you know, whatever the issues are, bring that immediately to the planner so he can adjust real time before he launches the next plan. So let's go ahead and show the video associated with this new product capability.
Machine learning algorithms detect trends and predict events with increased accuracy. But how can you make machine learning insights available to business users and embed them effectively in your supply chain planning processes? Oracle Supply Chain Planning Cloud's new Intelligent Planning Advisor makes it easy. Planning Advisor captures machine learning-based predictions in simple natural language form, along with their confidence level, contextual data, and recommended action. Then, with a single click, it navigates you to the screen where you can take action. Let's see Planning Advisor at work, starting with forecasting demand for a new product. Supremo Fitness is launching the Fit 30,000 Incline Treadmill in 120 days, and Supremo's demand planner Shanti needs to sanity check the sales team's shipment estimates. But how can she forecast a new product with no sales history? The Fit 30,000 has an incline feature like one Supremo treadmill, a heart rate monitor like another, and a top speed that matches yet another. Which affects demand the most? The planning advisor takes the guesswork out of these decisions. It compares demand for recent products based upon their attributes and predicts how the Fit 30,000 treadmill will fare when it's launched. Planning advisor can make supply planning more responsive as well. Steve, Supremo's production planner, can now get an alert from his IoT production monitoring solution that predicts a failure on the production line. Steve is able to see the details and the confidence level for the recommendation, which is to change the resource assignments for the planned production during the three days that the other line is likely to be down. With one click, he's able to review the production plan and decide whether to make the change. These are just two examples of how the new planning advisor embeds intelligence into your planning process. With Oracle's Supply Chain Planning Cloud, you don't need a data scientist to make planning smarter. Oracle's planning advisor leaves you in charge. Go to oracle.com to learn more about Oracle's intelligent supply chain planning solutions. So here are just, just some of our over 2,800 customers that we have in the supply chain cloud. And I'm very pleased to say that over half of them are live on some portion of our cloud capabilities. So in industrial manufacturing, a number of great customers, but like Titan, which has brought their wheel assembly line live on ERP and supply chain, including IoT production management and production monitoring. In high tech, tremendous success story at Western Digital, um, who after making a couple of very large acquisitions, is now prepared to bring a full $20 billion company online entirely into our cloud when they migrate the final few manufacturing plants at the end of this calendar year. Telecommunications industry, including companies like Vion in Europe, a full ERP and supply chain footprint, um, leveraging this for all of their 200 million plus customers. CG, food and beverage companies like Hormel, TWC, the wonderful company, Bimbo, which is in a country by country rollout plan. Um, retailers, wholesalers like Office Depot in Europe, which has recently gone live and is now running three million sales orders through our system on a monthly basis. And then finally, healthcare and life sciences and a number of healthcare entities here in the United States and around the world who, although their resources have been certainly stretched thin uh, in 2020, they still see the, the need and the push to continue with their implementations of the cloud. Now, one of those that I'd like to spend a little bit more time on, and that is Kohu. You know, Kohu is um, one of the leading semiconductor equipment manufacturers in the world and has been doing a number of global acquisitions and, and operating under a strategy of grow, grow, grow. Their challenges were that as they acquired many of these companies, they, they kept getting more data silos and different approaches and, and getting full visibility across all parts of the company was extremely difficult. So what Kohu decided to do is they, they came to us we, uh, and are leveraging the Oracle Cloud, and they decided to go on a big bang approach, which was to take the entire company live on all functions simultaneously. So they have basically have implemented just about everything we've got, uh, 55 Oracle products and five international locations, numerous global functions, value streams, eight business units around the world, all which has enabled them to really retire all of these legacy systems and, and to get a chance to focus on the business. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's drill into what's going on at Kohu with uh, uh, in a little more detail. And uh, I'd like to talk to the man who was really behind this deployment and the strategic move for the company, um, Craig Halterman, the CIO at Kohu. Uh, Craig has been the CIO at Kohu for since 2016. Prior to that, he was the CIO at Aerojet Rocketdyne. Before that, CIO at Excellus Technologies, and then earlier in his career, a number of roles at at Honeywell's Defense and Space Systems, Dow Chemical, and GE. Additionally, Craig has an MBA from the University of Indianapolis and a bachelor's degree in computer science from Indiana Central University. So Craig, welcome, and thanks very much for being here. Well, thanks for inviting me, Rick. So I was telling uh, the audience a little bit about the COHU implementation before you came on. And let me just start with uh, a question of, you know, what were some of the key business and system challenges that, that drove your decision and Kohu's decision to go to the Oracle Cloud? And what impact did those challenges have on your business? Yeah, that's a good place to start. I think the main thing that really hit myself when I walked in the door was how much was based on manual operations and how many customizations and solutions that we had in place. The strategic plan had been uh, based on a growth strategy, but unfortunately, our history of acquisitions had been left with a large set of inventory of decoupled systems. Uh, They promoted silos and it basically had all of our data spread across all the different business units in an on-premise environment. So we, we joked even that the integration strategy was simply change the signage on the building and our business cards and you were considered integrated. Well, in this day and age, the customizations that were left were a fact of life and our IT teams and systems had to support all those inventory of you know decoupled solutions from history and each one amplified our global complexities. And We were a global strategy focused company. We are a global uh, design and manufacturing solutions and our customers are global. So basically that technical debt as you referred to earlier on some things that I've heard with were the customizations that we had and we had nothing left uh, to really build a platform on and go forward with one solution. So that's why we looked at a scalable global platform from Oracle, the cloud implementations uh, of today that Oracle bring forward, you know, we basically satisfied the five things that we really were focused on. We wanted to deliver affordability, flexibility, integration, scalability, and transparency to our business processes. And without a different solution than what we had in place, we were never going to get there. So we needed a full digital transformation. That's great. So it really was about the digital transformation of the company. You know, change management's a very large piece of this as well, um, certainly. So, you know, how has the company adapted to be more resilient? Has the company adapted well to this digital transformation? And, uh, and how have you managed uh, the change within the company? I think that's an excellent point. I think from the very beginning, we started the project definition and trying to communicate to the overall constituents of basically everyone within the company that this was as much change management as digital transformation in regard to the technology itself. You know, I think from an IT standpoint, I really tried to focus the mindset is basically a paradigm shift. IT staff really needs to be focus on being integrators and not building and constructing. Uh, We want to use the capabilities and the expertise of the software and not really focus on them being able to code and to construct the new customization that puts us further in technical debt. So learning to let the experts be experts, meaning Oracle in this field can focus, you know, and do the design and manufacturing of semiconductor equipment is what we're focused on. So we're really adapting to that change in philosophy where we at one point would have years between upgrades or any kind of functional enhancement in an on-premise solution to now 
we're seeing new versions of software every 90 days. And uh, that first time you think of that, if you're still focused on what was once the norm of years in between or mainly sustaining and supporting because the person who used to wrote, uh, who wrote the original customization is gone and no one wanted to touch it. There were skeletons everywhere in our environment. So for us to transform the company, you know, this has been the opportunity to bring us to, you know, one company and not to individual companies. Um, any future acquisitions that we have, this is the foundation and the platform for tomorrow. It's not the platform for history's sake. Uh, that's, a, that's a model that is not uh, feasible for us as a company. And I don't think most companies are looking for that type of on-premise environment as, as they have in the past. Um, so now we have a solution that is evolving and growing and living as we are in our business processes. Um, having a unified system means that we can collaborate and scale much faster. Uh, when things change, we no longer have to incur the same level of, of stress or uh, technical debt that was associated with prior years. Uh, we're also learning to be, you know, accelerate our decision making. Uh, our answers and our questions in the past were always, you know, centered around or located uh, around the fact that you had four systems with information. And all of a sudden, now you have one system where information flows quickly between the integrated modules. In the past, previous, you know, you were a hunter and gatherer, and you had to figure out where the data was before you had to figure out uh, whether it was any useful information and the timing of that data often caused problems in probably less than the data integrity that we would hope for. So now we have a strategy to move forward, cloud-based, you know, affordability, flexibility, integration, scalability, and transparency. I think those are the key things. It's really been a digital transformation. Uh, we're, we're now on one solution and it allows us to collaborate not only our benefits for ourselves, but it also helps bring our supply chain closer to us. And it allows us to uh, keep a, a, a closer proximity to our customers. It's uh, important for us in a industry as such as semiconductor equipment. Uh, you have limited customer base, it's not retail. And this allows us to bring both the backside with your suppliers and your front side with your customers all together and closer. That's great. No, that's great, Craig. I mean, and, and you know, the key point, as you said, you know, allowing you to be the expert in what you're good at, allow us to be the expert in what we're good at, and and really focus all attention on the right things for your business. Um, yeah, I guess coming to a close, the the one question I think you've articulated very well as to why you made the decision to go to a you know, a single cloud-based platform and choosing Oracle and things like that. But as I was introducing Kohu to uh, the audience, I did mention that you'd taken the approach of doing a big bang, um, which is not, you know, often the case. We certainly have customers who take that approach, but, but many customers also take a more phased approach. So maybe um, out of interest, you know, that I'm sure is out there in the audience, why did you, why did Kohu decide that big bang was the right approach for your company? We, we looked at multiple different ways, phase, departments, locations. In the reality, what it came down to was the customizations and the configuration and trying to maintain a business while you're doing surgery on it was basically going to elongate the schedule two, three, four times. And all the customizations that would have been required to keep those on-premise systems working or building integration forward, it was wasted, you know, one-time money that would have been thrown away. So for us, we took the effort and action to move forward with bring it forward, uh, realize that we have to understand where our data is and what the data value and the quality of the data. And that was our larger challenge. It definitely for the foundational step, this first digital transformation, it built the platform and the foundation that we can move forward. If we would have had to wait two, three or four years to get all the integrations and customizations done, 
uh, it would have doubled the price of the, the project at least. And from our standpoint, we wanted to leapfrog. We wanted to leave our problems and challenges behind with uh, legacy systems, vendors were varied, uh, all your major brand names from SAP to Glovia and CISPRO were our base ERP systems, but we had XYZ name customization from a person who was now not in the company anymore either. All those challenges were just more than the risk associated with taking that leapfrog approach and doing the big bang and it worked out for us i applaud you for for making that sort of a decision uh last question um you talked about other transformations so so what's next on the agenda what are next steps for you and for kohu well living what we said and you know sort of walking the talk as as i mentioned earlier we we built a strategy for the company on acquisitions and growth. And from our uh, introduction of the original project and our original transformation, about nine months into that process, we had the opportunity to acquire our nearest competitor. So we did an acquisition and uh, we started the, the thought process of where we were going and how, what the timing would be. But the minute we finished and went live, we had started the process to actually bring all the integrations and all the platforms of the, the additional company that we acquired into our base one Kohu system. And we will be going live in the next uh, six months or so. Uh, in February and May, we'll be basically doing a big bang with that acquisition and they're coming into the foundation the users are already starting to uh, move their data and get on the system and get their hands involved in the process it allows us to uh, quickly accelerate time to information as you mentioned you know that agility and getting that speed to information uh, we need to focus on designing and building our products, not on learning how to design ERP solutions or EPM or PLM. We'll let the experts at Oracle do that for us. And uh, we're moving at, at rapid speed for us to get everything aligned and do that organizational change management, which is so key on this effort too. They're all learning new things as well as it's a cultural change. I bet. I bet. Very exciting. A lot of things going on, especially with more acquisitions. You're gonna, you've got a, a job for a while here, uh, Craig, and you're going to keep busy. So very exciting. Well, thank you very much, Craig, um, for being part of this. I'm, uh, I think the, uh, some of the things you said were very educational um, to the audience. And, uh, and once again, thanks very much for your time today. Well, thank you, Rick. Enjoyed the time. So as you just heard from Craig, uh, Kohu made the decision to go with a big bang approach. But the beauty of the way that we have built our cloud solutions is the modularity and with the open APIs that allow you to basically start wherever you want to in a phased process and take whatever approach is best for your company, full flexibility. Uh, and so some companies and some customers of ours choose a specific business function that will immediately add value to the company and in fact will provide the ROI to help fund future projects and future phases. So you know, initially implementing our PLM solutions, our transportation solutions, or our planning solutions. Equally so, we have customers who leverage the modularity that we provide to take a, a business process flow live and then roll through those business process flows. So procure to pay, order to cash, plan to produce, things like that. And then there are companies that, that take a you know, if you will, a little more of a big bang approach, but, but we we'll, may take that approach going country by country, plant by plant, division by division, in a phased approach to get to the end goal. But rest assured, we believe that the end goal needs to be to fully transform your entire enterprise and get fully on the cloud to benefit from the continuous innovation that is available. So to summarize, now is the time for you to move. Uh, we have just gone through a very difficult period of time. And, and as I said earlier, now is not the time for cosmetic surgery. 
Now is the chi time for a major pivot. And the fact is, is that successful companies see crisis as a catalyst for change. And in fact, some of the very best companies see an emergency as an opportunity to overhaul and simplify the entire operating uh, model, and as a result, emerge even stronger than they were before. So now is the time for you to pivot your company, move forward to the new normal, uh, be prepared for the next set of disruptions that, that will happen, and we at Oracle are here to help you along the way and partner with you to make that journey successful. So thank you very much for attending. We use Oracle as our backbone for our supply chain and really our production process and our financials. With Oracle Demand Management Cloud, we've been able to reduce our inventory $5 million through increased visibility and better forecast accuracy. We chose Oracle Product Lifecycle Management Cloud because it does a job, it was fast to implement, and it was cost effective in the long run. One thing that we're really proud of uh, right out the gate of our implementation is we've already seen an 81.5% increase in our on-time shipments. On-time delivery is critical for us. With Oracle OTM, we're improving 15 to 20% of our on-time delivery. So you have a way to maximize. That is the key. Once you have capabilities and systems like planning, you can optimize the asset utilization and the fuel consumption and really translates in cost reduction transportation by 20 to 30 percent. So with the Oracle Procurement Cloud, we have become 100 percent digital and we have become completely paperless. We were able to automate uh, a lot in terms of the vendor contracts uh, by having the smart contracts and we were able to save 30 to 40 percent of the time by automating this whole process. With the Oracle solution, we've been able to provide our material handlers and our inventory management teams with greater data to ensure that we can keep the floor stocked in an appropriate manner. Plus, we've also been able to provide our manufacturing team with more appropriate forecasts and availability reports to ensure that we always have the correct production running. Our customers didn't even notice the cutover, and our team is in love with the solution. That is efficiency, the favorite word of the day.